Many in my generation, Generation Z, are going viral with a complaint. What is that complaint? It's working. And we're going to cover that here today on Speechless. Cut for time. Hey, 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 everybody. Welcome back to Speechless Cut for Time. I'm your host, Kev Ferris, 22-year-old conservative college student, host of Speechless on Cities 92.9, the news and talk of Bloomington Normal. But I can't necessarily fit everything I want to do on my Sunday show for two hours, so I bring it to you here on YouTube in Cut for Time videos. And this one is just fascinating to me. And before we get to it, don't forget to like this video, subscribe to the channel, comment what you think, and share this video with your friends, guys. Please do all of those. So let's get right on into it. Generation Z, my generation, has been drugged through the mud for a lot of just crazy complaints. They're cons constant victimization of themselves and everything. And sometimes it makes me absolutely embarrassed. And I want to be clear to everybody, this is not necessarily a reflection of the entire generation, but I'd say that it's a large swath of them. Um, I'm not necessarily in this, and I'm hoping to show that with this video. But let's get right on into it. There's been multiple complaints uh, from my generation that have been going viral on YouTube, TikTok, the like, about just the parts of adulthood that seem pretty mundane and normal to just about everyone else. Specifically, in this case, I'm talking about working. Working, going through college, and getting a job afterwards. And they seem to be missing a lot of the point. So we're going to talk about this one first right here. Uh, this young lady went viral after this message. Let's hear what she has to say and talk about it. I have a bone to pick with America. So I'm headed to my serving job. I fucking hate it. Oh, strong language. I fucking hate it. She Why am I really doesn't money? like serving? I have my literal business marketing degree that put me in a cute $80,000 in debt. And I make more serving sushi rolls. Cause I was, I've been applying to marketing jobs fucking for weeks now. And the, the pay cut is insane, insane. But the jobs that are like a cute 150 to 200,000 a year, I'm not getting those. I'm a 20, almost 25 year old, my birthday soon, almost 25 year old chick going against, you know, corporate ass America, people with so much experience. All I got is my degree. You know, people say, get your degree, but then they don't talk about how you need experience. The degree was the experience! Oh, very emotional. I need to relax. She does need to relax. I will agree with her on that one. So here, there's a lot to break down in that one in and of itself. Uh, the first thing I want to talk about is the inflation of the college degree. So yes, you will have a lot of people in society say, go to college, you'll make more, go to college, you'll make more. And they're not totally wrong, but think about it this way as well. Back when my, my parents went to college back in the 1980s, it would cost them maybe a cool $20,000 for all four years for the college. And a lot less people were going to college at that time. So the cost of the degree and the value of it seemed to make sense. Made a, it was a good decision to go to college. Nowadays, however, it costs four times as much minimum on average. Four to five could cost you $100,000 for four years. Hers was 80,000. So four times as much, four to five times as much. And a lot more people are going to school. A lot more people are going to college. So, you know, I'm no economics master, but I do understand the idea that what that would mean is that you are Paying more for a college degree, much more, and getting a degree that's worth less, no matter what the degree is. And she got a marketing degree, which I'm going to talk about. But understand that. Nowadays, if you go to college, you are paying more for a degree that is worth less. I've recognized that. I have recognized that. One, I actually have two majors currently in school. I'm a marketing major and a political science major, soon to graduate in just a little over a month here. And I'm not finishing my education there. Also, the other thing, too, is I got I got a good amount of scholarship to also go to school, which made it a lot more financially reasonable to go to school. Then I plan on going to get my law degree and potentially my my master's in business as well, because I know that that will yield a higher salary immediately after I am done with those. There's another there's a few other things that she's negating here. So the idea of a college degree is not necessarily to get you a higher starting off point. 
because you could work that sushi roll job for the rest of your life. The problem is that you probably are not going to go up incrementally in salary or at least the same amount that you would in a marketing position. Sure, you could make a you could get a marketing position that pays as much, if not less than the sushi roll job that you have. But the $150,000, $200,000 jobs that you're seeing, you're never going to make that doing rolling sushi rolls with no other chef experience or anything like that or any kind of certifications. However, if you work in just a few years, you could eventually get to those points of one hundred and fifty dollars to $200,000. But it's not going to be just granted to you off the bat. The fact that my generation doesn't understand these things that you're not going to have, it all has to do with this idea of delayed gratification. Look, I'm, I myself as a Gen Z member, I fall into the instant gratification idea that I just want to have something immediately. It's actually in, in some ways, human nature. It's what drags people through the mud, through addiction and other things. The idea of just being gratified instantly, but the entire idea of a job, if you actually want to be successful is delayed gratification. You might have to work a crap job that you're not very happy with, that you also feel like you're being underpaid for, for a year, two years. But in the business world, it's all about climbing that corporate ladder and eventually making your way up to the point of which you're making $150,000, $200,000, $300,000 a year, if not even more. But you're not going to get that off the bat. You're not, period. But that's not the only complaint people have with working. Other people just have a problem with how long they have to work such as this young lady. We're going to talk about her and see what she has to say. She just has an issue with the nine to five in general. Let's take a listen to what she has to say. Also more uh, obscene language, by the way, from her. I know I'm probably just being so dramatic and annoying. Probably. But this is my first job, like my first nine to five job after college. And I'm in person and I'm commuting in the city and it takes me fucking forever to get there. There's no way I'm going to be able to afford living in the city right now. So that's off the table. Like fucking duh. If I was able to walk to work and it would be fine, but I'm not. So it literally takes me like I leave here, like I get on the train at 730 and I don't get home till like 6 15 earliest and then like i don't have time to do anything i don't i want to shower eat my dinner and go to sleep i don't have time or energy to cook my dinner either like i don't have energy to work out like that's out the window like i'm so upset oh my god nothing to do with my job at all but just like the nine to five schedule in general is crazy being in the office nine to five like if it was remote you get off at five and you're home and everything's fine but like i'm not home it takes me long to get home and like like people that drive to the office like it doesn't you don't get off at five and I know it could be worse I know I could be working longer but like I literally get off it's pitch black like I don't have energy how do you have friends like how do you have time to like meet like a guy I don't know like how do you have time for like dating like I don't have time for anything and I'm like so stressed out she's just so stressed out it's just so awful having to live in the real world just so terrible. No, here's the thing when it comes to that one, the nine to five. Uh, so first off, ever talk to a farmer? I have family, good friends that are farmers. Talk to them about what their schedule is like. And it varies throughout the year. They have some, I mean, especially during the winter months, they might be a little bit lighter. But talk to them about how long their hours are when it's harvest season. Yeah. Want to know what time they're up before the sun? Want to know what time that they're actually done with their day? After it goes down. Yeah, talk to them. Also, not to mention the fact that even outside of farming, somebody who actually had a business degree, my father, he, he oftentimes was not even super present in my life because he was working on advancing his career, trying to provide for our family. And he would be gone before I woke up in the morning for school and he was home. If he came home, somebody, sometimes he stayed in the city with uh, at his work so that he could keep and be there for the next day. But if he came home, it would be after I went to bed. That's simply the realities of adulthood. That's, that's if you want to make it, if you want to make it, that's the other thing too, is if you want to, if you want to be bigger and better and make more money, especially at this time in your life, if you think you're drained now from a nine to five, imagine when you're 40, 50, 60, imagine when you have a kid, maybe two, Imagine then how drained you are going to be. And I don't understand. I work a lot. I mean, the, the thing is, yes, I'm still in college right now. I'll even admit my schedule 
allows for me to do a, a lot of great things and spread myself out. But I know it's not going to be easy when I first start out, but you get into a routine. You get into a routine. You make time for those things that are most important for you. Before 9 a.m., you get up. My mom was a teacher. My mom was up at like 6 a.m. every day growing up, going out for a run. And then after school, I had a babysitter for like an hour, and then she would come home and have to be a mom. If not, also great papers, great things, do, do her job after school. It's simply the way the world works. And it sucks, but if you want to make money and you want to provide for yourself, and when I say it sucks, Yes and no. Like, it sucks that that maybe you can't necessarily do everything you want to do all the time. But that, again, goes with the idea of instant gratification versus delayed gratification. Put in the work now, and life will be easier later. It will. Put in the work now, and it's not going to be today. It's not going to be tomorrow. But you're going to be able to go on a vacation. You're going to be able to travel to different places. You're going to be in a position that might allow for more flexibility in your schedule but you don't just get it after you earn a degree. A lot of people have college degrees. I've already covered that. A lot of people have college degrees. You're not special. That's the problem. We have so many people in my generation that that have all been told they're special. When they have their qualities, everybody has their qualities that set them apart from somebody else, but it doesn't make you inherently the best or deserving, more deserving than everybody else to not just live out pretty much everyone else does and has before you. Let's take a look at this one. This is another person who's just tired, just tired all the time and tired of the 40 hour work week. Let's see what she has to say. Why are we not talking about how fucking sick a 40 hour work week is? (laughs) So you're you're telling me that I have to wake up at the fucking butt crack of dawn every single day, go and work somewhere that has fluorescent lighting is cold and uncomfortable for the entirety of the day and do that five times a week no like that's fucking sick like you guys are mentally ill like please get diagnosed see this one's a fascinating one i love how she ends it you guys are mentally this is sick you guys are mentally ill please get diagnosed i think that's funny uh, there's a few things with this one. First off i don't 100 percent disagree with her in the idea of, yeah, it would suck to go work in a place that has, it's cold, uncomfortable, has fluorescent lighting, all that stuff. Either A, try to find a new job, or B, try to talk to management about changing the way that their corporate culture works. Because if you actually look at a lot of businesses nowadays, if that's what you're working in, a majority of workplaces, they're trying to make them to be someplace that people want to work. They've recognized that flaw and they're trying to make it someplace that people want to work. In some ways, I think they even go too far. There are some businesses, they have ping pong tables, they provide all these meals and everything, which that's that's not even necessarily too far. They can do what they want to do. Um, But in some ways, I'm like, how is that actually working with productivity? Maybe it really helps. But there are a lot of businesses out there that are taking, not politically, but a more progressive approach to how they treat employees in the office, especially after COVID. So I'll agree with her on that, but you kind of have more control over that too. Either talk to your managers or find a new job. As it pertains to the 40-hour work week, well, that's kind of a norm in society, but there are some companies, including even some abroad and different countries that are looking at alternatives to that. If they think that you can be more productive by working maybe uh, 40 hours or plus and, and not necessarily working five days a week, there are some places that are, that are experimenting with that, with, with alternatives. So maybe look into some of those. I think the biggest problem I have with this one is the assumption in her entire argument that everyone else is wrong, that everyone else is mentally sick, that she has no burden in any of this, that everything else should be provided to her. And I think that's the biggest problem with that one. It's not even just a complaint about work. It's more so just assuming that everyone else is wrong. Maybe not internalizing and saying, hey, why is it that they do this this way? Why is it that I'm content or that I'm, she's obviously not content, but why is it that I am, maintaining where I'm currently at instead of searching for something better. I, I don't understand how people don't realize how much control they actually have over their lives. If she wanted to, she could either go find a new job. Heck, she could go work as a sushi roll lady to go back to the first one. You have so much more control. You could quit your job today, but you know probably that's not the financially the best decision. But it's not all just going to happen overnight. You can put in the work and change your outcome. It's absolutely doable and anybody can do it.
I firmly believe that. And yeah, life's going to kick you. It's, it's not going to be easy, but that's the way life is. Life isn't meant to be easy. I'm sorry if I'm the first one to ever tell you that. The other thing I do want to point out that I find very interesting, I was not only searching for clips of women doing this. And I don't know if it's only women having these complaints or if that only women are the ones going out and complaining about it on social media, or if it's only women that are going viral about it. And that's why those clips were so easy to find. But if you have any clips of men complaining about this too, I'd be more than happy to react to those and give my, my analysis of uh, just the degradation of my generation as they, as they continuously grow weaker and weaker and weaker and not even understand that they are also in, in part, part of the problem. So I don't know. What do you guys think? Don't forget to like this video, subscribe to the channel, share this with your friends and comment what you guys think about people in my generation. Again, it's not everybody in my generation and it's not just women. I'm sure there's men that have these complaints too. I can only, can only really find women complaining about it on social media. Um, but I'm curious what you guys think. Let me know in the comments. God bless you. God bless America. And until next time, this has been Speechless.